Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you find everything space and often SpaceX. Today, we will tell you about the NASA Artemis teams who visited SpaceX's Starship factory and what they discovered. Stay tuned. If you are new here, we warmly welcome you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you will never miss any of space and SpaceX news. Let's not waste a second and move on with the video. The winner of NASA's Human Landing System contract was awarded to SpaceX, which bid a $2.9 billion for the privilege of developing the means by which NASA astronauts will return to the lunar surface for the first time since the Apollo program. SpaceX was in the running alongside Blue Origin and Dynetics, but reportedly undercut both those prospective suppliers considerably with its bid, according to the Washington Post. SpaceX proposed using its Starship spacecraft currently under development as the landing vehicle for astronauts once they arrive at their lunar destination. The HLS is a key part of NASA's Artemis program, which will begin with uncrewed flights, followed by a moon flyby with a human crew, and eventually a human lunar landing at the south pole of the moon during a mission which had been targeted for 2024 as its first flyby date. NASA announced that SpaceX, Blue Origin and Dynetics made up the entirety of its field of approved vendors for bidding on the HLS contracts back in April last year. Since then, both Blue Origin, which bid alongside a national team that included Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper, and Dynetics have built full-scale models of their systems and submitted proposals detailing their plans for the functional versions to NASA for consideration. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been actively testing functional prototypes of its Starship spacecraft in Texas and is also in the process of developing the Super Heavy booster that will propel it to the moon once it's ready. The plan here was for NASA to have chosen all three companies to build out initial versions in order to satisfy the early requirements of the project. And then ultimately, it was generally thought that the agency would select a couple from the list of three to build human landers in order to provide it with some flexibility when it comes to the means of getting to the lunar surface. That's essentially how NASA operated with its commercial crew program for the International Space Station, which saw awards for both SpaceX and Boeing to build astronaut transportation spacecraft. SpaceX has already qualified and begun to operate its vehicle, and Boeing hopes to bring its option online either later this year or early next. SpaceX has won a lot of trust at NASA by delivering on the commercial crew program with a reliable, reusable human-rated spacecraft in the Crew Dragon. The Post also says that in addition to its attractive pricing, NASA was drawn to Starship's flexibility and cargo capacity since it's aiming to be able to not just fly humans but also large quantities of supplies and materials to the moon and eventually beyond. Starship is a long way off from that goal at the moment. SpaceX has been quickly developing new iterations in a rapid prototyping approach to its test phase. But the most recent Starship high altitude flight ended poorly with an explosion prior to landing. Other elements of the test program, however, including showing that Starship can successfully reorient itself in midair and slow its descent for landing, have been more successful on past tests. None of the tests so far have left Earth's atmosphere, nor have they involved any human flight testing, both of which will require a lot more development before the spacecraft is deemed mission ready. SpaceX was also the launch provider chosen to deliver components to the Lunar Gateway satellite in 2024. Working with Maxar, which will produce the actual power and propulsion element and habitation and logistics outpost. These, however, will be delivered via Falcon Heavy, which has already had multiple successful launches. Thanks to the failure of Blue Origin's NASA's human landing system lawsuit, SpaceX and the Space Agency were finally able to get back to work on November 2021. Taking advantage of that, NASA astronauts and Artemis program leaders recently took a tour of SpaceX's South Texas Starship factory and launch pads, a massive hub of activity that the company has deemed Starbase. 
in doing so, save for updates from SpaceX and even members of the public over the last six to nine months, NASA officials were finally able to get up close and personal with the progress SpaceX has made, while the space agency was temporarily forced to halt work on the HLS. While some aspects of SpaceX's progress towards orbital Starship flight tests were hampered by asymmetry between different programs, namely the readiness of Super Heavy and Starbase's orbital launch site, SpaceX has still made some impressive progress in the last year. At the start of 2021, Starbase's lone orbital launch site was effectively a dirt lot and a fraction of the launch mount, the latter constructed well in advance of the rest of the pad. Less than a year later, the orbital launch site, including a skyscraper-sized launch tower, three massive arms, perhaps the most complex launch mount in spaceflight history, and the largest cryogenic tank farm ever built for a rocket, is on the verge of completion. Several weeks of work are likely needed for SpaceX to finish and qualify the 146 meter launch tower's chopsticks. Arms meant to lift and possibly catch Starships and Super Heavy boosters and quick disconnect swing arms, which fuel Starship and help stabilize the rocket. The pad's massive tank farm has also yet to be filled with any liquid methane fuel, LCH4. However, that tank farm is complete enough and filled with hundreds of tanker trucks of liquid oxygen and nitrogen to begin extensive cryogenic proof testing with Starship and Super Heavy Booster 4, Starship's first potentially flight-worthy booster. That process began on December the 17th and a second cryogenic proof followed on December the 21st. On the 22nd, SpaceX continued to expand their ambition of its booster testing and filled Super Heavy B4 more than any booster before it, loading it with two or three thousand tons of cryogenic liquids in about two hours. There are signs that most of that liquid was actually liquid oxygen, LOX, the oxidizer Starship will be filled with before launch, and both sides of the tank farm were visibly active. In other words, once SpaceX is confident that the tank farm is safe to store liquid methane, the first super heavy wet dress rehearsals and static fire tests, eventually simulating full thrust just before liftoff, could begin almost immediately. Once the tower's three arms are at least partially functional, SpaceX will also be able to install a Starship on top of Super Heavy for the second time and test a fully integrated two-stage Starship launch vehicle for the first time, paving the way for the first orbital velocity launch attempt as soon as the FAA grants a license. And that concludes today's episode. If you enjoy the video and want to see more upcoming videos about space and SpaceX, subscribe, like and share. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.